Low Earth Banks is an area of rocky reef with a central depression filled with sediment and around the outside there's more sediment on lower seabed. This is in the southeast corner so we're starting on the lower sediment around the rocky reef and then going west onto the reef itself. This is the sediment and you can see emergent sponges and another piece of rock here which has direct prize owens. More rock awash in the sediment and this is the edge of the uh, reef proper. It's a long slope going up from 22.5 meters where we are now to 16 meters and shallower. And here we can see the effects of, of sediment. On the verticals and on the higher bits we've got more diverse turf including these nice big pachymatisma sponges, the grey ones, sponge crusts and algae starting to come in, especially uh, red algae. So closer look at this higher rock and you can see more species coming in there. Big pachymatisma over to the right and lots of fish life because there's lots of nooks and crannies. This is back down onto the sediment at the bottom and we're looking west here and you can see rock with sponges on. The sponges are emerging from the sediment and we've got sponges such as the Axinella dissimilis on the right behind it Cycolipta penicillis and in the front Adreus fasicularis, a juvenile. More sponges here, more emergent rock and a close-up showing that the sediment down here is biogenic fragments, bits of shell, with bits of rock which are very small, smaller than the bits of shell. And here we have more sponges, apparently on sediment, but of course they're not, they're on rock which is awash in sediment. Going back to the video, give you more context, there's more emergent rock with erect bryzoans and sponges, and the higher up bits of rock have more erect bryzoans. There's a diver for scale, and there's a wafting going on off the camera at the moment, because we want to look at what's underneath this apparent sediment. And here we can see we've got a polymastia boletiformis. Sediment's fairly deep, about finger depth, but of course it changes, it moves. And this is a close-up showing that we've got pink arrows showing pink coralline crusts. The black arrows are erect bryzoans. The little orange arrow is a little probably doomed sponge crust. There's that polymastia. And we've also got worm tubes and barnacle scars and dead barnacles. So at some point for all these things to, uh, to settle the rock must be free of sediment. A bit more wafting, showing depth of sediment, also showing that there's some silt in amongst the, uh, the major sediment, the larger particles. And this is looking back towards the reef edge. That knife going down there is 16 centimetres long, give you an idea of scale. This is starting to look up the reef slope, uh, my buddy. Helpfully lighting up some of the uh, lumps of rock. And here we have a summary of what we've seen so far. So we've got that same polymastia boletiformis with a yellow arrow. White arrows show emergent bits of rock amongst the waves of sand. So the sand moves quite frequently. And they've all got sponges and erect bryzoans on them. And the black arrow on the right shows a higher bit of rock with some algae coming in. This is more sponges. And number one is Cycolipta penicillis. Sorry, number one is um, Polymastia penicillis. Number two is Cycolipta penicillis. And we've also got this Adreus fasicularis, a close up here, showing the identification features, the pointy tips to the branches and the longitudinal striations on the surface of the sponge, which show up amongst the fine silt 
which it always seems to accumulate. This is a specialist in veneers and this is close up of rock with a bit that was cleaned showing that is uh, iron rich sandstone. Here we see the reef edge. This is a wide angle still shot and you can see the difference in the biota on the higher elevations and the verticals as opposed to the uh, lower horizontals. Here we're higher up the reef slope and we've got brown algae starting to come in. This is Dictyota dichotoma and we've got more and different sponges including Amphilectus fucorum, the shredded carrot sponge and a few dead men's fingers and we've also got fine red algae. But a lot of the horizontals have fine material on them which over the summer settles out from the water column. These waters tend to be very rich in nutrients with a lot of sediment input and you get uh, quite large bacterial blooms and also plankton blooms. This is looking down the uh, reef slope back the way we came showing the sediment on the bottom with diver for scale give you an idea of uh, how big stroke tall the reef slope is. And this is on the reef top a little bit further over a little bit more to the north and west and we can see my buddy is still on the more lumpy and more interesting, more diverse reefy habitat. But on the right, we should show that a bit more in a moment. We've got this area which is flatter, less diverse, with some slightly different species and more in the way of sediment on the top. This I think is an area of, if not of sediment veneer biotope, it's a veneer influenced biotope. I think that's different from the main reef. Over to the right, we'll zoom over that in a moment, we've got some deeper sediment. Here we go. Sediment's deeper. There's a lot more scour going on, as well as the blanketing, which you get with finer sediments. As we go further over to the right there are more areas of this sort of sediment and coming up there's a close-up of this piece of rock you can just see coming up here and you can see coralline crusts on that and also on the coralline crusts there are a few red algal crusts and you've got barnacle scars and worm tubes and you can see the sediment here is different from the sediment in on the bottom. There's a lot more rock fragments, and those rock fragments are larger, but they're interspersed with biogenic fragments. So that's, um, as you can see here, this is off the bottom, and biogenic fragments isn't just shell fragments. You've got bivalve shell, you've got gastropod shell, and there are also bits of branching bryozoan, bits of pentapora and other pieces such as barnacle carapace and I believe these behave differently from bits of small rock fragments. This is further over showing more of the uh, veneer habitat on the top of the reef. So what have we seen so far? Let's try and summarize. We've got reef and we've got sediment. At the bottom is sediment, fairly deep, but along the edge of the reef you've got bits of uh, rock which emerge and those are enough to add up to a veneer biotope dominated by emergent sponges including some like Adraeus fasicularis and some of the polymastias which are specialists. You've also got the sediment and veneer on the top. This shows another bit of that further over and we've got a cuckoo wrasse here 
and on the left we have waves in the sediment which shows that it moves fairly frequently and this is that larger size sediment so it scours quite severely but on the right we have an area which has been swept clear of this larger sediment and that's got accumulated material that's dropped out of the water column so you've got finer sediment higher up on the reef where there are less sediment influences you have a much more typical inverted commas reef biota with sponges some of which are very large including sponge crusts and algae and direct bryozoans of course the area to the right is too small to be counted as a biotope it's smaller than five meters by five meters in extent on this dive it's tempting to record two habitats one is reef and one is sediment with sediment at the bottom but the more we look the more we find species such as the supposedly rare Adraeus fascicularis are actually pretty frequently found on these veneer habitats and there may be a suite of species that can be thought of as analogous to ancient woodland indicator plant and tree species in terrestrial ecology finding several marine species from this list may indicate that a veneer is present and operating to modify the biota, the habitat. Last thing is to mention this cuckoo wrasse. This was apparently offering a cleaning service, it kept coming towards me as I sat and cogitated and then going back to its position as you see here. That of course is another story.